in a recent video where I compared the IKEA hobo stove against the classic Emberlet. I demonstrated how when you put a pot on top of the Emberlet, quite often it creates an awful lot of smoke. And I had discussed how that the issue is with airflow through the top. I also showed how by taking the crossbars and turning them 90 degrees, you can improve the airflow and eliminate a lot of that smoke. Well, in this video, I want to show you another idea I have on how to improve airflow at the top of the Emberlet, and that is drilling holes through the uprights. If you're interested in seeing if this will make a difference, keep watching. Okay, before we begin the test, I thought I'd just take a minute to go into a little bit more depth about what it is I have done and how I think it'll help with the airflow. So in that original video, which I will link right up here in the corner, uh, you can see when I put a pot on top of the emberlet that it dampens the smoke down, consider or dampens the flame down considerably and causes a lot of smoke. And that was when I was using kiln dried hardwood. Now that effect is made worse if you're using softwood, which is going to be very resinous and smoky to begin with. And if the wood is at all damp, it'll also make it a lot smokier. So I thought there must be a way of improving the airflow at the top of the stove, which I, I assumed or not I assumed, I believe is the culprit to the reason for the extra smoke. So what I had done in that video or shown in that video is how I had taken my Dremel tool and made little cuts on the center uprights, all four sides, then removed the crossbars and set them on at 90 degrees to the way that they're intended to go and how that raises the pot just a little bit off of the top of the stove, improving airflow actually quite dramatically. I had mentioned in that video as well that an option might be to drill holes in those uprights, those uh, portions right there, and maybe that would increase the airflow. Now I'll show you where I got the idea for doing this before I tell you how I did that. And that is with the fire rat. So this is a fire rat. I also have a video on the fire rat that you can watch to see my, uh, my impressions of it. This is the titanium one that Mikhail sent me. And if you'll notice, it has holes drilled in the, up, in the upright portions at the top of the stove. And this little stove works amazing, way above its weight class. It is probably the lightest wood burning stove, I think, on the market in the titanium version. And one of the better working ones for sure. And it has great airflow. So that, I believe, is that's what makes the difference is the extra holes at the top. So that's where I got the idea for drilling out the top of the classic emberlet. So what did I do? Well, I do have a drill press at home, but I'm sure this could be done with a hand drill. I've done lots of projects with that. I did need to use a carbide drill bit. I, what I did is I started by just punching some uh, center holes in the center of each plate. Not punching, just divots so that the drill wouldn't wander. And started off with a smaller diameter drill and my, worked my way up to 3 8 inch. So those are 3 8 inch holes that I have there. Uh, you could probably go a little larger, but that's the largest carbide bit I had for doing that with. I have not tried this out yet, so you're going to see it for the first time today. So how am I going to run this test? I have a second emberlet. That's the only way to do it is to show you, demonstrate it. This is a titanium version that was gifted to me by a friend and I was very fortunate to have this now. So now I have one in stainless steel and in titanium as well as the titanium fire ant. Quite a few emberlets. I love them. Uh, so this is the one that we're going to demonstrate as the standard. I'll load this up with wood. Actually it is already loaded with wood and I'll start uh, do the same for the other stove. We'll get a fire going in both of them. When the fire is established, established I have a pot of water. I'll start by putting the pot on top of this one and you can see how it creates a lot of smoke and then we'll just see by switching the pot over to the other one if it improves the airflow. All right now let's get this test started. Okay to save a little bit of time I got the fire going ahead of time rather than uh, make you watch me start a fire again in two stoves. So the fire looks like it's pretty even in both stoves right now. Yeah pretty much so. Uh, all right now I have a kettle of water. Today I'm using my Kessel by Uberleben. Let's put it on top of the titanium one as a standard, see if it generates smoke. And it does. Uh, you know, that's not too bad. It was actually worse the other day, and that could be because this fire is burning so hot with the dry wood right now. But it does increase uh, quite a bit of smoke, which means it's dampening the airflow down significantly. Now, let's put it on top of the modified stainless steel and see if it makes any difference in the amount of smoke. And the answer is, yes it does. There's still some smoke being generated. But actually I'm quite impressed with how much that improved airflow on top of the stainless steel one with the modifications, the holes and the crenolins. Let's put it back on top of the titanium one again. Actually it's burning pretty cleanly right now, but you can see there is more smoke being produced 
on top of the titanium one because of the reduced airflow than there is on top of the stainless steel one. Let's put it back on the stainless steel one again. A little bit of smoke, but boy, that's much better than, than it was before I made the modifications. Okay, I think we can draw a few conclusions from this. Let's wrap the video up. Okay, so what lessons can we learn from that test? Well, to begin with, I think that without doing any modifications to your invalid stove, if you want to get the most out of it, the cleanest, most efficient burn, start with cut dried hardwood. Very dry hardwood will give you the cleanest burn. Wait until the fire is well established and it's going strong before you put your pot on it and that'll minimize any smoke. However, if you're not able to get good dried hardwood to use in your stove while you're out in the woods and you have to resort to softwood or wood that's even slightly damp, then you may want to consider how you can improve the airflow. It will improve if you wait until the fire is well established, but you know, they might take quite a while and it may never get as hot as it needs to in order to eliminate smoke. So what can you do? Well, there are two modifications. The first one I showed in the other video, and I'll show you again now, is to take the crossbars and put them on top of the stove at 90 degrees to their original intended function, like that. And that raises the stove just about three quarters of an inch off of the top and gives you a little bit more airflow, enough that you'll see a significant difference when you put the pot on top. So that's one option. That's probably the easiest one because most people are able to do that. If they don't have a Dremel tool, they can, can do it with a hacksaw blade. The other one is to do what I did for this test, which is to drill holes in those little uprights there. And that's a, again a 3 8 inch hole drilled with a carbide drill bit. And that also made a huge difference in the amount of smoke that the fire was producing when I put a pot on top of it. Now, let's just talk about that for a second because I think it's important to qualify that having a hot burning fire that is smoke free is not always the best thing. For to start with, it's going to consume your wood much faster than if you dampen the fire down a little bit and with the, with the restricted airflow. It also means a hot fire, you have to watch your pot closely. If you're doing anything other than boiling water, the heat of that fire, and I've done this so I know from experience, you have to keep stirring any food you have inside to keep it from scorching on the bottom. So too hot a fire can be just as bad as a fire that is too smoky. Personally, I will take the less smoke and just maintain uh, a good stirring of my pot to make sure I don't burn. If it looks like it's gonna burn, then lift the pot off. So the improvements that I've made to my Amberlet, I'm likely going to do the same thing to the titanium one because I think it's worth the, worth the effort to do. But once again, if you don't have the ability to make those modifications, then at least start with a good hot fire that's well established, made from dry hardwood, if that's available to you. Okay, let's wrap this video up. All right, well, it's turning out to be a beautiful day here in Halifax. It's much hotter than I expected it to be at this time of the morning. We're probably approaching 27 degrees, and it's only about 9.30 in the morning. It's a perfectly almost cloudless, free day, cloud-free day. No wind. I mean, it's ideal for making videos, but it's almost too hot when I'm sitting out in the sun. That's why I had to move into the shade. So I'm not sure if I'll get another video to made today, but I will in the near future. And until you see me again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.